Hi guys, Righteous Rayma here, bringing you your dose of truth for the day, and that is this. Don't discount the small things, the small battles, the small victories, because it's those small things that God is going to use to prepare you for the big thing. Um, I, I will share a quote. I heard a quote that said, the more sweat shed in practice, the less blood shed in battle or something like that. The more sweat shed, something to that effect. The more sweat shed in practice, the less blood shed in battle. And so what that says is, the more you practice behind the scenes, behind the curtains, behind the stage, the more prepared you will be when it's showtime. You know, when you're in the boxing ring and you're with your opponent, and this is the opponent that's gonna like be the opponent that just seals your career in boxing or in wrestling or in MMA fighting. This is the person, but there was a lot of little ones that let this be the one. There was a lot of little ones, nameless, faceless ones, that, that a lot of minor battles that let this be the battle royale, yeah, the one that got you famous forever behind this battle. Um, some Bible verse examples, uh, well, Bible examples, David, King David, you know, he was a shepherd boy in his father's, you know, sheepfold. He, he fought against a bear and a lion, right? And so when it was time to fight against Goliath the giant, he was like, this ain't nothing. I fought against, you know, lions and bears. So, I mean, I'll just do those same skills with this here. But had he been like, oh, no, no, I had a dream. The Lord told me I'm going to win. I'm going to be famous before the king, before King Saul. I'm going to be famous before King Saul because I'm going to fight against this giant and Goliath. And I don't fight with these little bears. I don't fight with these little um, these little, uh, little, uh, these little lions. I don't have time for this foolishness. I'm going to be fighting against a lion. And this is going to be famous. But it's the it's the, it's the the lions and the, and the, I keep wanting to say lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs> it's the lions and the bears that prepared you and made you confident and made you skillful and let you know your weaknesses and let you know your strengths when you were asked to fight up against the lion. It's it, the little thing. It's the little thing. And then another example, Joseph. Joseph the dreamer with the with the with the colorful coat. You know, he had dreams in his in his in his biological family. And he, well, he had dreams in his immediate family, right? And he shared his dreams and he went through some stuff, as you all know, and he ended up going to a prison who was falsely accused and put in prison. And so he had to interpret the dreams of two small things of a cupbearer and a baker of a king of the, of the pharaoh. And so what if he had been like well, I already had a dream. I'm gonna be serving. I'm gonna be interpreting Pharaoh's dreams. So I'm gonna have to do a little bitty dream. I'm not interpreting a little bitty dreams, cup bearer, um, um, baker, or whatever you are. I only interpret king dreams. But it's the it was the little people. Well, one of them who got reinstated with the king, and, and when the king had a grievous dream, the per the little person is who referred him. Oh, I do know this dude. It's this dude I know. I made him in prison. Joseph, he real, man. He 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 really, man. He he straight. He really know how to interpret dreams. Like he got me together. Like he he the reason I'm back with you now. He he saw it. He come back to you now. Um, and so that's what got him an audience before the Pharaoh. So don't despise the small things. It's the small things that prepare you. It's the small things, the small practices, the small stages, the small speaking engagements, the small churches. So that you start off doing small. That is what prepared you for the big stage. Because you already knew, okay, I do this too much. I need to stop saying this so much. I need to do this better. When I'm speaking before people, I talk too fast. I need to slow down. I need to take pauses. I need to breathe. I need to enunciate. But you learned that talking before your daddy's small church. Or you learned that speaking before your classroom or from the Sunday school class. So before you got to the big stage, you were prepared. Because what, what God ain't going to let you do is get up there and embarrass him. This, now, that's what you're not going to do. <laughs> God is not going to let you get up there unprepared, looking crazy, and say, I come in the name of the Lord. And they're looking like, okay, that's your God. Okay. Them your peoples? Okay. So, God's preparing you with small things. But y'all are so bougie. You've been prophesied to so much so that you knew, oh, I don't. I don't want I don't want an associate's. I don't want a bachelor's. I want a doctoral degree. 
but it's the it's the, the stuff you learn from your associates and your bachelors and your masters that prepared you for the study skills that you would need for your doctoral. You see what I'm saying? The intern. I don't do no little internships. I get paid for all I do. I don't do the volunteer work, no community service. I'm gonna get paid for whatever I do. But it's the small things you did for free that let the people in power know we can trust her with this work because she did it for free for them and she didn't get no thanks and no attention, no appreciation. So we know we can trust her with this position. So I want you all to do not, the Bible verse says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. I'm telling you all, it's a small, I'm telling you all like me for example, I uh, did for, I started off doing photography, I've been doing photography for seven years for pay. Maybe like a year and a half before then for free, but for pay, for it's been seven years. And you, I work for free for a church for a few years, for free. Never got a dime. I practiced shooting everybody in the church, all the services. I just kept on shooting everything. I was there with my camera all the time. And I would get feedback from people on Facebook. Like, I don't post a picture of me. I don't post a picture of me look fat. And my chin look big. Oh, my hair look a mess. I don't post a picture of me. I don't do a picture of me. And so I would get a lot of feedback. And it was sometimes kind of deal. This, this, I mean, most of it was, it was overwhelmingly positive. It was every once in a while you see somebody saying, don't do that. I don't like that picture. I don't like that angle. I don't like that. So when they would tell me that, I would listen to them and I said, I'm gonna shoot them again next Sunday. I'm gonna make them look, I'm, I'm gonna make them, I'm gonna be more flattering in this next photo I take of them. And so it was through people's feedback from free photos that I learned to make beautiful pictures. I make plenty pretty pictures, period. Cause I practice in a church setting for free. And then I started getting paid, you know, later on, my next I went to, I got paid some. And I started, you know, and I started charging people whatever. And so, I don't despise the free beginning because it let me know what people like and what people don't like. People have to see themselves looking good. You know what I'm saying? So when you shoot well over 100 people and you get their feedback, you know, okay, this is what the clients want. So I took a picture of a person. They, I heard people say, I didn't know I could look so pretty because I've learned to shoot in flattering angles. Like this angle here, this angle, this angle, this angle. Certain angles are more flattering than others. But I had to get that feedback from people. So I take pretty pictures. And if I take a bad one, I don't post it. I post pretty pictures. <laughs> but I don't say, man, actually I pay. I work for free for a year and a half. I didn't get no money for that. They went not right. They took advantage of me. They used me. Even though I was getting paid a little bit, I was still doing for church for the church for free. I would get paid on the outside for pay, but I would do for church for free. But I'm telling y'all, all this stuff y'all prepared me. You prepared me. And then like dating, like these, like some of you all, you know, church girls. And then some of you it's gonna work this for some of y'all. For some of you all, you're gonna meet your husband at 17 years old, you're gonna be a virgin gonna be at your church you're gonna be a virgin it's gonna be perfect and beautiful all the things but for some of us for some of us um for some of us <laughs> who shall remain nameless we did not wait to marriage um we might have wished we had but we didn't and we met our husband it's gonna be all the little tom dick and harry's along the way that prepared us for our husband all those are tom dick and harry's that there were you know practice there was a lot of little ones along the way that helped us to be prepared for the right one. So you practice with Tom about how to be more submissive. You practice with Tom about how to be more feminine. You practice with um, with, with Dick how to be more, you know, feminine. You practice with Harry how to be more confident, how to say what you want, how to set boundaries. So then when Richard came, when Richard came on the map, you already knew how to carry yourself. You knew how to dress. You knew how to do your hair and makeup. You knew how to talk. You knew how to be on a date. You knew how to be around his friends. You knew how to act around his pastor and his and his family. Because you already were prepared for the other guys. The other guys dated them. Last about three months. Last about a year. On and off for five years. It didn't come of anything. Feel like a waste of your time. But the whole time, maybe God was using you. Maybe God was using them to help you practice on who you're going to be. So when it's showtime... You already know that hair don't look, that kind of blonde don't look, that shade of blonde don't look right on me. You already know, uh, I can't wear red lipstick. That, that ain't for me. You already know, when I'm loud and ghetto like that, but his coworkers, he don't like that. You know, oh, I don't, I don't, and still had to walk in high heels. You know what I'm saying? I need, I need to have a little, I need to pay for the meal sometime. I can't make him pay for everything. You see what I'm saying? But you learn all that because you dated Tom Dick and Harry. So like a waste of time. I gave them five years of my life. I didn't get nothing out of it. Yes, you did. You got the practice out of it. You got prepared, prepared out of it. And so instead of you just being like, I mean, I love her. I'm with her. I mean, she's all right. She's just an average woman. You can be a phenomenal woman. You can be an exceptional woman that, it's like, she just gets it. I mean, she just, what she do? Her hair, makeup, clothes, where she work, how she, how she carry herself. It's just, she just got it like that. She didn't always have it like that. 
she wouldn't always like this. She had to learn it from the past few examples that she had. So please, y'all, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Um, guys using all of that stuff like a resume. They don't just want you hiring for this job. They want to see your track record. What, what did you do for the past 10 years? They want to know if you're trustworthy. And so guys preparing you with these small examples. Um, thank you guys for watching. Please share, subscribe, write to the stream. Bye-bye.